Hi, everyone. This is Charles Hoskinson, broadcasting from warm, sunny Colorado. Always warm, always sunny, sometimes Colorado. Today, we are talking about soon. You may have noticed that I had a tweet not too long ago, which said soon. And uh, I said, we're going to announce a few things. And this is the first of a collection of announcements that are coming in, in the next 60 to 90 days that I think are going to make people very happy. So we get asked a lot by developers. Uh, they say, hey, when can we start writing software for Cardano? When can I actually start writing my dApps? When can I start building my DeFi? It's a good question. And to do that, you need a DevNet. You need some form of network where people can start writing code, deploy that code, test it, verify it works with the understanding that the code that you write will run on the mainnet. I also tweeted not too long ago uh, an Xbox development unit. And uh, the reason why I did that is that if you're a game developer, you don't start writing Xbox games the day the Xbox launches, or else Xbox would launch with no titles. And then Microsoft would be like Field of Dreams and be like, if you build it, they will come. Instead, you actually have to start writing software for the Xbox in anticipation of its launch, usually six months, a year, two years beforehand, in our case, a lot sooner. So we wanted to actually start launching dev networks that will be attached via sidechains to the Cardano main network. And so the title of this video is The Island, The Ocean, and The Pond. The Island, The Ocean, and The Pond. And we're going to talk a little bit about what our dev networks are going to be. OK. In the beginning, when we started the Cardano project, we had no idea what a smart contract actually was. You know, we had the Nick Zabo 1990s definition. We had the Vitalik Buterin Ethereum definition. And uh, we had things that had happened in industry. We kind of understood what um, contracts look like. There's paradigms like designed by contract, and there's a programming language called Eiffel that follows that. And we kind of also understood things like a service-oriented architecture or microservices. And we also kind of understood around that there's some sort of off-chain and on-chain paradigm. And, the, and there was also projects like, for example, resource-aware ML. So there was these quasi-Turing systems and so forth. So there was a lot of confusion around what exactly is a smart contract, what does it do, and how does it fit into a broader ecosystem? So usually what you do is you start with a solution in mind. Like, for example, I have a video game and I want to do uh, DRM for that video game, okay? Or, you know, I have uh, health software, like an electronic medical record system, and I want to uh, make my records portable. Okay, so these are examples of problems you want to solve. Uh, and so then you say, okay, what part of that game is going to run on the client's computer or my servers? And what part of that game, the DRM system maybe runs on chain and so forth. So you already see that there's some sort of decomposition where you have some code running on the blockchain, some code running off of the blockchain. So the pond is Ethereum, and that's where the cryptocurrency space currently exists. And the pond is basically all about saying, oh, okay, there's this little pond, we'll use blue for it, Actually, if we're talking about the Ethereum pond, we should use rainbow. There we go. Here we go. Here's the Ethereum pond. A little bit of water. And basically, uh, this is like an, a Petri dish to experiment with a lot of on-chain activity. So we've seen a proliferation of new paradigms and languages like, for example, the Ethereum virtual machine. Uh, we've seen people try to bring in WebAssembly. Uh, we've seen a whole bunch of virtual machines written for this particular space. And we've seen some specialized languages, for example, like Solidity is the most popular language. But you also have Viper, you know, you have Serpent, and these other things that have been floating around and exist. Uh, Kadena, for example, has something called Pact. It's a Lisp-like dialect. And the reality is that this is just a pond when you think about developers. If firms like Consensus and others, they say over and over again, we've won, we have all the developers, we've won everything. But if you actually look at the size of, of this developer set and the amount of applications deployed, 
compared to the ocean, it's probably more like this. So a very, very, and for this is not even a scale, it's, it's probably even smaller. You know, let's do this. There you go. Okay. So uh, this is where things like the Java virtual machine lives. This is things like .NET. .NET has 5 million developers. Java has, I think, more than 10 million developers. JavaScript developers, uh, things like uh, Swift developers and Objective-C developers and so forth, uh, PHP, okay? There's so much stuff, C, C++, uh, da, da, da. okay, that's the ocean. And most of this tooling that lives in the ocean is not really doing much or interoperable with what lives in the pond. So while the pond is great for experiments and to basically get an understanding of what you're going to run on chain and off chain, what you're going to do with smart contracts, how you handle the resource and costing models, how you wire smart contracts onto larger things. All, all that makes sense from an experimental sense, but the reality is you're not going to get mass adoption, mainstream developer adoption, until you have a strategy to cover all of these guys and bring them into your ecosystem. The other thing is that there's a difference between running an experiment and running production code that you intend on having around for a long time. So imagine, if you will, there's a magical island that exists in the ocean, and it's a perfect island. It's an island where everything goes right. It's an island where the things that you build, they work right the first time, and it's just beautiful, and it's a happy place. It's one of the, if there's the blue zones where people live to 100, that's the island. Okay, the island the ocean. So what is that island? Well, that is what our scientists spent a huge amount of time building along with the DSLs. So we recognize that the experiment's important. We recognize that there's a lot of learning that has to be done there. We recognize that it's good to give developers a beautiful experience, something unique and pristine and we recognize that it makes a lot of sense to have a path and strategy to bringing the tens of millions of developers across the world with their tools, with their languages into our ecosystem. So if we're going to do dev nets that turn into the main net, and we're gonna have a smart contract strategy to rule them all, because remember all of this stuff gets run by Ouroboros and our network stack, and it's super high throughput and low cost and easily upgradable, extensible, so we have the right engine to run these things, then we need a right strategy. So in 2017, we started a relationship with a firm called Runtime Verification. And the reason we did this is for twofold. One, Grigori, the founder of that firm, who's a professor at Runtime at the University of Illinois, I uh, worked for NASA, worked for DARPA. He's a legendary guy. He created something called the K framework. And this is basically like a meta language. So what K is all about is this idea that you can write the semantics, the basically how a programming language works and interprets the world around it in a meta language. And then suddenly you can start comparing and contrasting and building tools amongst all of these things. And then second, runtime verification is kind of a domain expert in programming languages, and they built something called Yella for us, which is a virtual machine that's based on a, a very, very, very old, I think this is from 2003, built by Apple, the LLVM. The people who actually built the LLVM work at University of Illinois, the department of chair, and his students worked with runtime verification to design Yella. So Yella looks a lot like LLVM, but gave us a good foundation and what we wanted RV to focus on was the ocean. Basically say, okay, build us a path so that one day in a three to five year time horizon, we can write the semantics of all of these different languages and platforms. And through the magic of something called semantics based compilation, it's something that RV is looking at within this entire ecosystem. Eventually it just works. You add the semantics, the case semantics to our blockchain, they compile, they run on Yella. This beautiful bespoke framework built on older ideas that are 17 years old, very well understood in the academic community, highly optimized. 
And uh, basically, we can cover all the developers. So we said, go play with that. They spent two years working on it. We pulled back a little bit because we wanted to focus in on getting Shelly out and these other things. But then in the second half of this year, we brought them back in. And we said, okay, let's get a DevNet running. And let's get a DevNet running in December. So coming this December, uh, and if there's some slippage, it'll be January, but we think that uh, roughly the first half of December is our launch target. Uh, Christmas is coming, so if we miss that window, it might be very difficult to do a launch after the 15th, but very likely December or early January, we are going to launch the Yella DevNet as a sidechain of Cardano. So the first version of it will be decoupled. And then uh, over time, we're going to evolve that code base and then link it into Cardano. But that means you developers can now start writing Yella applications and Yella assembly. And then over time, we're going to add lots of surface languages to Yella. Solidity will be the first target, but we're going to start adding mainstream programming languages like JavaScript and other such things in these families. Uh, and it'll just compile and run on Yella. Huzzah. Uh, starting in December, you can start writing Yella applications, issuing assets on that framework and so forth. And because it's a dev network, it's going to work on the main network with limited to uh, little uh, modification when we link it together as a sidechain in the first half of 2021. Now, this long-term research agenda, we're going to run it for years because we use Yella and K in many different things. And uh, actually, Algorand is already using runtime verification services as our other firms. So there's some cross industry ideas that are floating around. RV is a great firm and uh, we'll keep investing in it. And over time, all these mainstream languages will be made available and more. And K allows for user defined semantics. So if you want to add your programming language to Cardano for everyone to use, you'll just write the semantics of it in K when SBC is working properly, it'll compile to Yella. And then people can write smart contracts in it. And if we ever upgrade Yella to Yella 2, to Yella 3, and so forth, you do not have to upgrade the compilation infrastructure. K will take care of all of that. So we have an ocean strategy. And what's really cool about RV is they're also experts in formal verification. So in addition to constructing uh, Yella and these semantics and giving you guys an incredible development experience and so forth uh, that's based on ideas that came from Apple way back in the day. Uh, we're going to also design a lightweight formal verification and specification language so you can begin specifying your smart contracts and verifying that your contracts are correctly implemented. RV already did this with verified ERC-20. So they were the first firm in the world to write the ERC-20 specification in a formal machine understandable language. And one of the services their firm provides is verification that ERC-20 has been correctly implemented. Okay, so that is the ocean. What about the pond? What about Ethereum? What if you're an Ethereum developer and you really want to use all your Ethereum tools because you just love Truffle, you love Solidity, and you're just a masochist and you love pain. Hellraiser is your favorite movie. We got you covered. The very same technology that allows us to deploy Yella we're going to also launch a DevNet for the EVM. And this is going to be a permanent DevNet in Cardano and permanently attached at some point as a sidechain in Cardano. And we're going to keep permanent Ethereum interoperability with that. What that means is whatever the latest version of the Ethereum EVM is and how Ethereum tooling works, we're going to maintain that infrastructure with Cardano. It'll be part of the Cardano ecosystem and the maintainers of Cardano are going to work on it. And that side chain is going to allow you to run Solidity code. It's going to allow you to run EVM byte code. It's going to allow you to use all your favorite Ethereum tools and port over your tokens one to one. And that means coming, I believe we've had this tentatively slated for uh, December 10th ish. And that might slip a few days, but we're feeling pretty confident about that. You can begin writing Ethereum code on Cardano and it's just gonna run better, faster, and cheaper. And because we can highly optimize this because of Ouroboros and other technology we've developed, uh, this code will continue to run faster and faster at a much lower cost than what it runs on F1. Okay, so uh, we're gonna launch a DevNet to cover the pond 
can stick with the pond. Uh, so interoperability, yay. And then finally, we have the island. This is something near and dear to all of my developers' hearts. The reality is that while these are great languages written by beautiful teams, great people, smart people, and the pond has certainly been very innovative, it's about time to have a proper smart contract language with resource determinism, easy to shard, and a better way of approaching things. So on the Cardano main chain, we are deploying the extended UTXO model and multi-asset, native multi-asset, and Plutus. And that's being done as a series of hard fork combinator events. The first of which is happening this month. The next is happening in Q1, probably mid Q1. And the final one will happen in early Q2. And each and every one of those will bring in these capabilities alongside a beautiful development ecosystem. Okay. And that means that when you want to use the island on the main chain, you can write the best applications. It's like Swift with iOS. You can write an Apple uh, application for the iPhone with, uh, with many different programming languages, but the best experience you're going to get is the one that Apple provided through Swift. Well, equivalently, the best experience for writing Cardano applications is going to come from Plutus, and you get a lot of benefits for a Plutus application, and we'll be broadcasting a lot of those things in the coming months. Uh, however, if you want to start writing code today, right here, right now, we're going to have Yella DevNet coming this month or early next month, depending if we meet the Christmas window or not. The Ethereum DevNet coming now. You won't have to change any of your Ethereum code. Yella is versioned, and so there's going to be some cool new things that we develop for Yella. And you might have to upgrade your app a little bit there. Uh, but basically, this gives you the ability to start building for Cardano today, this month. And what you build for Cardano will work on mainnet when we link them with a the sidechain the first half of 2021. Not to be outdone. Catalyst is showing up. Fund 3 is going to be all about dApps, all about DeFi, all about Gogan, all about developers. So $500,000 will be available for Fund 3. And they're going to keep growing, and it's a permanent part of all funds moving in the future. And this is going to be the initial wave of funding for developers coming in the next few weeks and months. So not only can you build, but you can use the Catalyst framework, the voting that we have, all the other cool things to get some direct funding as grants to get your applications off the ground. And funds are going to keep running, keep growing in size. And each and every one of them from here on out is going to have dedicated funding for application builders and people who want to migrate, people who have cool ideas for Cardano. So not only are there dev nets now coming, which means that for the first time ever, you can start writing Cardano applications, but then we also have funding matching those dev nets and you'll have a great community right now, over 4,000 people in idea scale to discuss your ideas with, which is a huge value. And... Coming soon, in Q1 of next year, we're going to have the Plutus Playground, uh, which is basically the development environment for Plutus, and you'll be able to start playing around with that. Now, we're also going to make some educational partnerships, and in Q1 of next year, we're going to work with some major educators, people who have taught hundreds of thousands of programmers, to create very specific content for Yella, for Plutus and Marlow, and for Glow. Glow, by the way, is the uh, Francois framework for mutual knowledge systems, which allows for cross-application development. So we're going to make sure that free open source Creative Commons content is created uh, for high distribution amongst all developers. And then we're also in that quarter going to get some form of a stack exchange running uh, and a knowledge wiki, basically to get things uh, rolling on the developer side. So a lot of people are starting to get involved in development. Uh, we've been working at this really, really hard. Uh, I'm super excited to get the dev nets out this year. It's a major, major thing. It takes a huge amount of work to do this. And we had to do it in parallel with all the Shelly work and all the Gogan work going on. So our people haven't slept much for that respect. 
But you know what? We now have the island. We now have uh, the pond and we now have the ocean. Everything our competitor can do, we can do just better, faster and cheaper. And we have a path to capture all the mainstream programming languages. It'll take a little while, but the foundational technology is there and it's been validated through dozens of peer reviewed PL papers and uh, major conferences throughout the years. And we have a magical wondrous island. We have our own island. Uh, only this one was built from the ground up by PL experts uh, to basically provide the best experience for issuing assets and the best experience for developing smart contracts on chain and off chain. And you know what? You have a colossal community, ever evolving, ever growing, 5,000, 4,000 now, somewhere in that range. My goal is to get it to 10,000 by the end of fund three and just keep it growing, keep it growing, get it up to 100,000 by the middle of the next year. And uh, these funds are now rolling and grant money is flowing. Uh, that's the community's money. Now, how big will these get? At the current price of ADA, I believe the funds will have 80 million plus dollars per year. Per year at the current price of ADA. We reach dollar ADA. Uh, that's uh, that's you know almost a billion dollars, give or take. It's uh, it's pretty crazy uh, what you can do when these numbers start scaling. So huge amount of funding is available specifically for grants to the community, and a lot of that is going to be in DApp development, DeFi development. We're also developing our own DeFi portfolio, uh, and uh, we'll make some announcements this month on that and next month on that. But I'd like to have coverage of the whole DeFi spectrum. Uh, and we have some great partners there. One last thing about Glow. Glow is a really cool project. People try to conceptually ask, well, what's the point of it? I really wanted a Cordova of Cardano. So Cordova is a very popular mobile application framework to write cell phone applications across platform. You can go native, you can go Android, you can go iOS and so forth. Well, Glow's goal is to deploy apps on Bitcoin, uh, to deploy apps on Ethereum, is to deploy apps on Tezos, on Cardano, and other chains. And they're going to keep adding support over time. They have a beautiful way of doing that. And uh, Glow applications are, are quite nice. They're based on OCaml syntax. Okay. We are partnered with them. We're working in them. And uh, I'm probably going to take a strategic investment in their company. We're negotiating that right now. Uh, but what's really cool is Glow will work with the Ethereum DevNet. So they already have a compiler of Glow to, uh, to EVM, and uh, they're working real hard uh, to get that out when we launch um, the Ethereum uh, DevNet this month. Uh, so you guys can also try writing Glow applications. And what's cool is the Glow applications, write once, run everywhere, will long-term run on many different systems. So if you are a cross-platform guy, and you don't want to bet on your blockchain, you have a path, and Glow's a really cool path. Uh, if you're a mainstream developer with mainstream languages, the yellow framework will get you there long term. And our first foray into that is happening uh, this month or early next month, just depending upon if we hit the Christmas window or not. And there's a huge, beautiful, cool roadmap that's there. And if you love living in, an, in a beautiful island, perfect weather, and things are incredible, that's the point of Plutus. And there's so many cool things there from extended UTXO to... Uh, native multi-asset to Plutus, and there's a series of hardcore combinator events that we're systematically marching our way towards. And because all of it is powered by the Orgorse engine, we'll get very high throughput. And when the time comes and Hydra is turned on, we will have better throughput than Visa, MasterCard, or any of these other guys combined. Uh, we'll be able to cover pretty much everything. So this is the Cardano developer ecosystem. It's the island, the ocean, and the pond. I think we're the only people that cover all three. I think we have the best holistic strategy, and this is the month where you finally get to play around with it. A lot of developers are going to be floating in. A lot of people are going to be talking to us. It's going to be a, a huge amount of fun. <laughs> we're going to be making a lot of partnerships in the next 90 days, announcing a lot of cool stuff, uh, and uh, things are going to move very, very quickly. The other thing is because of the sidechain model, uh, it means that we are right now building out uh, the infrastructure to wire on sidechains to Cardano, special purpose sidechains. 
we have three code platforms. We have the Mantis code platform, we have the Jormungandr uh, code platform, and we have obviously the uh, Cardano Haskell platform. Now, Jormungandr is written in Rust. Uh, Mantis is written in Scala. For the DevNets this month, uh, we're launching on the Mantis code base that we developed for ETC because we know it works and it's reliable. Long term, we're going to use the Jormungandr code base for the side chains that we're going to wire onto Cardano. And we're already building a specific bespoke team for that uh, because Catalyst also uses the Rust code. And uh, this allows the Cardano Haskell team to operate undisrupted, meaning that all of the work on the side chains in the DevNet, uh, most of that work uh, is done in parallel with the work that's being done to bring Plutus to market. This is the beautiful thing about having multiple platforms and parallelism in your development flow. So uh, we're very confident in our ability to deliver. Uh, we understand this code very well. Mantis in particular has been on market since 2017, and we've had a joy of a time updating it recently. So it's very production, uh, good code. Uh, and Jorman Gander, we've been playing around with since the ITN days, and we've learned a huge amount from that. And there's a great team there. And obviously, we're moving at bleeding edge speed with the Haskell code base. Releases every week or every other week. So it's pretty cool to see all that come together. And the advantage of working with great firms like RV is they're intrinsically cross-chain, so they talk to everybody, and they're cross-industry as well. Boeing is a client of their company. Dozens of other major co companies are clients of their company. Uh, and uh, it means that it makes it very easy to have the Fortune 500 conversation and also having a path to covering all the mainstream programming languages. That's good stuff. It's very, very good stuff. So that gentleman is the island, the ocean, and the pond. That is our soon for December. More to come. Uh, we're just going to keep pumping it out. Uh, it's going to be a very exciting next 90 days. But I hope you guys enjoy this as much as I do. And I cannot wait to see what you guys build. Funding is available. DevNets are up. And you get to use some of the old in the pond. You get to use some of the new. And uh, you get to see all the cool stuff. Thanks for listening. And I hope you guys have a great Christmas. See you on Ada Lovelace's birthday. Cheers.